Hey guys, so I'm not sure if you've heard yet or not, but the Game Developers Conference, where we're supposed to likely learn more about the PlayStation 5 and the Series X, why we should pick one over the other, and why we should eventually sacrifice our firstborn child to either Sony or Microsoft, has been postponed. Uh, unfortunately, everybody is just panicking about the coronavirus, and it's... Massive death toll of 3,000 Chinese people. And, you know, a, a grand total of less than 100 Americans when our p population is more than a million times that. But, you know, no big deal. Just companies panicking when they don't need to. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going through their heads, and I'm not going to pretend to. But what I can tell you is that the GDC has been postponed for now, and hopefully we learn a little bit more about when they plan on bringing that back at some point in, here in the near future. First, let's start looking at the PlayStation 5 and everything that it can offer us that both Mark Cerny, the lead architect for the system, and GameStop have both at least suggested a full 8K TV support, an 8-core AMD GPU, 3D audio brought to you by Dolby, a built-for-purpose solid-state storage drive, backwards compatibility with existing PlayStation 4 games and virtual reality hardware, and of course, ray tracing technology. All of these brought to you by uh, excuse me, all of those are going to exist on the PlayStation 5 in some make or model or fashion. But there are a couple new things that are just sort of leaked at this point. And one of those is a possible wireless charging method for your PlayStation 5 controller, uh, possibly through a modification. The pen found by Saqib Mansour of the Segment Next website is called the Wireless Charging Adapter with Game Control Keys for Computer Game Controller. So basically it's going to be coupled to a charging base and wirelessly recharge the battery in the controller the same way you would use a charging pad for a high-end smartphone. So far, it's just assumed that it's an attachment rather than a an inline piece that you would expect driving up the cost of the controller, which is already likely to be very high considering something else that we know is that it's going to be able to monitor your sweat and heart rate, allowing for a far more immersive haptic level of haptic feedback. And if that wasn't enough, we have a couple rumored games that may launch with the system, including Godfall, The Last of Us Part Two, and Ghost of Tsushima, a Demon Souls remastered game, the predecessor to the original Dark Souls series, Gran Turismo 7, although it's not necessarily confirmed by Sony, as we... As I hinted at with the last interview that I touched on with uh, Polyphemy Digital, they do want to push forward with the Gran Turismo series and aim for not only high-end graphics, but push more for the competitiveness aspect that we see in Gran Turismo Sport. Next up, we also have Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and God of War 2. Because... Both of those are, well, in, in terms of game production, fairly new. They are likely not to be out at launch specifically, but rather maybe 21 or 22, if that makes sense. And of course, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which, as you may know, has been pushed down quite a bit and is now in the ballpark where 
it could very easily launch as a cross-gen title. Now let's talk a little bit about the Series X, shall we? So far, the some of the confirmed specs include 12 teraflops of graphical processing power, variable rate shading, so instead of focusing equal points of power on every point on a screen, including those that aren't really going to be changing that much, like say that tree over in the corner, that tree is not going to be getting quite the same amount of attention as whatever protagonist or antagonist, depending on the game, is going to be getting. Next up, we also have hardware accelerated ray tracing powered by that AMD GPU and quick resume for multiple simultaneous games that is going to be effective post reboot as well. So although I had originally believed that the current generation supported this already, it did not support it quite to this degree. So you would be able to switch between, say, FIFA and Battlefront simultaneously, seamlessly, and with amazing ease. We also have smart delivery capabilities. So whatever game you're playing is going to be optimized for those specific files necessary for whatever game or system you're playing that game on. A great example would be Cyberpunk 2077. So say for instance you, you bought it w the day it launches and it's supposed to be for your Xbox One, right? But because the Series X is also going to be backwards compatible, there's going to be a few files supported for the Series X that are not available on the Xbox One, right? When you go and put that game in the Series X for the first time, it's going to be downloading a couple extra files that aren't necessarily available for the Xbox One. Things that maybe power that variable rate shading or that ray tracing that I touched on earlier on. And on top of that, just like the PlayStation 5, it's supposed to be able to power 8K resolution and 120 frames per second. So regardless of which one you go with, 8K resolution is going to be possible on these systems. But whether or not you are actually capable of getting that on a TV in, in this marketplace is still up for debate. However, thankfully, we've still got a, a long, long ways away before any of these actually hit the market. So hopefully, we see a little bit more about what kinds of systems we can look forward to when they actually do decide to launch in the holiday or early 2021 launch. And if you guys want to support me, blah blah, Facebook, blah blah, YouTube, yada yada. And if you guys want to support something a little bit bigger than me or YouTube or something a little bit more meaningful, you can do so by heading over to HumbleBundle.com. Personally, I picked up a, a very nice VR bundle earlier, only ran me like 20 bucks, and honestly, not only was that a steal, but I was able to, to support the Call of Duty endowment, which, strangely enough, actually exists. But they support quite a few different charities throughout the months. Uh, one of them that you might be able to recognize would be the World Wildlife Foundation as well as UNICEF. Those are just a couple of the many, many charities that they support and that you support just by buying those bundles from them. That link you can find in the description down below. And I'd just like to point out that no, they're not sponsoring me in any way. I just think it's really cool what they're doing. Because uh, it, it's it's the closest, it's the best win-win scenario you're ever going to find. 
well, one of them. 